Let's take a look uh, at an overview of signal transduction. And this is again by hormones uh, or substances that cannot get inside cells. And we recognize two fundamentally different mechanisms by which such signals or hormones would work. So let's look at one of them right here. This is one. The hormone binds to a membrane receptor, changes its shape, which allows it to interact with another protein in the membrane. Let's look at it again. The hormone binds to the receptor, which changes shape. That results in an affinity for a membrane protein, which is an adenylate cyclase, an enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is the classic second messenger. It's also the first second messenger that was found. So we've just seen signal transduction. The hormone, the red pentagonal shape, is still an, on the outside of the cell. It's bound to a receptor on the surface of the cell. But its signal, its information, has been transduced in cyclic AMP, a second messenger, which then bound to another molecule, in this case, another protein, characterized here by the black diamond. That protein is a protein kinase, which means it's going to catalyze the phosphorylation of some other protein. Let's take a look at, again. Here we have cyclic AMP bound to this protein kinase. ATP is the source of the phosphate to phosphorylate another protein. Now, I'm not showing you the details here, but each arrow represents a phosphorylation reaction in which another protein is being phosphorylated by the previous one. So we talk about a kinase cascade or a phosphorylation cascade initiated by the hormone in this example. The hormone could be glucagon or adrenaline, which does pretty much what you're seeing here with some more details, but the same thing. Each of those red arrows is a cascade of phosphorylations in which enzymes get phosphorylated one after another, and the last one in this cascade has the ultimate cytoplasmic effect. Again, as an example, if this were adrenaline and this were a liver cell, the result of the several phosphorylations is to activate the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase. So that's the enzyme that's going to catalyze the degradation of glycogen. If you think of adrenaline as the fight or flight hormone, the reason it would do this is you've just had an adrenaline rush for whatever reason. The adrenaline has gone through your circulation to your liver, and it's going to let your liver release a whole lot of sugar so you can play better tennis, escape the robber, whatever it is that you need to do that caused the adrenaline rush. Here we have gene regulation. The other pathway for the hormone is to uh, create a phosphorylation cascade that, again, phosphorylates one protein after another. In this example, we end with the phosphorylation of a protein called STAT. It's a signal transduction and activation of transcription protein. That's what STAT stands for. And that phosphorylated protein, which we just saw, let's try to see if I can do it again. The result of the phosphorylation cascade is to phosphorylate the STAT protein in the nucleus, which now again has affinity for DNA in the vicinity of a gene that needs to be turned on in response to whatever that hormone was. And we see that happening by the activation of transcription. The transcript then again leaves the nucleus, goes into the cytoplasm. This is one kind of signal transduction. Let's look briefly at the other. The hormone is a polypeptide. Many growth factors act like this. They bind to a receptor on the surface of the membrane, which is also a kinase. So it's a receptor kinase. And the result is ATP donates a phosphate and actually phosphorylates the receptor itself on the cytoplasmic surface. And that then kicks off another phosphorylation cascade. And once again, the result is to phosphorylate a nuclear protein, which is a transcription factor, which can bind to DNA and turn genes on. So cell membrane receptors transduce an external signal into some small molecule in the cell, like cyclic AMP. General levels of phosphate can be elevated. Certain lipids can be elevated. Or calcium, all of these are other second messengers. And they all facilitate a phosphorylation cascade that leads ultimately to a final phosphorylation and a final cellular response in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. And again, we're focusing on gene regulation, so we're really looking at signal transduction events that lead to gene regulation.